now when we have our agent definition ready, let's set up some clip properties. And clip properties is instruction to the simulation on how to use the clips. So it's not part of the agent definition because it doesn't actually alter the clips. It just tells the simulation how to use it. So the way you do that is through an agent clip properties. If I just select it by default, everything is gone. There's no points, no primitives, no vertices, nothing. And that is just because every instruction is going to be a point. So you can see if I add my first clip here, say I'm just going to do IL1, then I'm going to have one point. So I have one instruction basically. So I can see I have the agent name, I have the blend values, and all the data that we can set from this node. In most of the clips we have works as loops already. So just to change something, I want to change this idle. So you can see it kind of works, but he would do this quick jerk when he moves up his hand. So I'm just going to smooth that out a little bit. So let's see what kind of options we have. First, you decide what clip you want to do something with. If you want to, you have this clip name alias, and that allows you to make small sub clips of a long clip. So say that you have a long clip that starts with an idle, then it transitions from an idle to a walk, and then you have a walk. Then you could set that up as three subclips. You can have one loop for the walk, one loop for the idle, and then one subclip for the transition. So even though we haven't altered the clip, it's still just one clip, the simulation will read this as three different clips now. But in this case, we're not going to do that. Then we have the gate speed, and that is if you're not using locomotion. And then you can set the loop range, which is pretty obvious. You can see now I have a very short loop in one second. And then you can set the start frame if you don't want it to start in the first frame. You can, you can tell it if you want it to be able to loop at all. And then what we're going to do here, we're going to change the blend values. So we're just going to use the full clip, but then we're going to add some more blending to it. So I'm going to put 12 frames. And now if we play it, you can see it, it's a tiny bit smoother. I mean, it's very subtle. But a little bit. So cool. Right, and we can see now we have this clip. So let's see it. We have you can see we have this loop range, but because we haven't defined the loop range, it's just going to take the full range of a clip and use that as a default. We also want to do that for the idle two. So I'm gonna to go to idle two, gonna do the same operation. And as we have both these set up, the one thing you will see here now is that actually this loop range is way longer than that loop range. As this is just a mirrored version, we want these to be the same. So what's going on there? That is just because I forgot to do something when I mirrored the clip. So you can see here in this configure clip info, you have a clip range. I should have set the clip range here, but I didn't. And what's happened is that just because I'm playing the clip, I do an agent animation unpack, it will just read the full frame range. So what I want to do is I want to take the frame range from the original clips and then set that in this configure clip info. For example, for this walk two, I want to go to walk one and see what was the frame range there. That was 24. So then I got to go to this configure clip, clip range, set this to 24. For the idle, well, let's see, we have the idle here is 65. So I'm going to go in here, set this to 65. And then for this last one, for idle to walk, I want to set that to 37. And as we now have changed the agent definition again, I need to go to the agent definition cache save that, reload it, and now you can see now the loop range is the same.